I regularly see people in the cryptocurrency community advocating for consensus mechanisms other than proof of work. Recently, I have even seen Bitcoiners that I greatly respect and admire leaving Bitcoin altogether to build proof-of-stake chains. This used to surprise and confuse me, but after some recent introspection, it's become clear to me that the understanding of the truly revolutionary nature of proof-of-work is not widespread. I want to take some time to share my understanding about this important topic. Proof-of-work uses mathematics to enable a crucial function in Bitcoin, the decentralized and permissionless addition of new blocks to the blockchain ledger. As Bitcoiners, we take this application for granted, but the concept behind proof-of-work is much deeper than Bitcoin. It is, in fact, the answer to an ancient philosophical question. How can anyone, anywhere, verify that a particular event has occurred? This is a deep philosophical question. It falls within the realm of a branch of philosophy called epistemology. Epistemology is the study of knowledge itself. It is concerned with concepts such as truth and belief. Bitcoin uses proof of work to allow any individual, anywhere, to independently come to consensus with anyone else, anywhere else, about the precise state and entire transaction history of a global financial network. Consensus about truth. Let that sink in. Actually, Rewind and listen to that sentence again. In philosophical terms, proof of work represents a first principle. This makes it unique among all other blockchain consensus mechanisms that have come after it. Satoshi, in describing the need that Bitcoin addresses, writes, What is needed is an electronic payment system based on cryptographic proof instead of trust. Within that statement is the recognition that all of civilization, up to the invention of Bitcoin, hinged on institutions based on foundations of trust. Particularly in the case of the financial system, the state of your finances is held within a black box controlled by one or more financial institutions. You must trust that institution to protect your finances. That trust has been breached regularly for the last thousand years. The requirement for trust in critical systems is the result of the inability throughout history to effectively solve the epistemological problem that proof of work solves. When you can't independently verify the truth of a statement about the state of reality, all you are left with is trust. All cultures must rest on a set of first principles, a set of ideas that are taken as true on their face and from which all additional aspects of the culture can be built. The stronger the foundation, the stronger the culture. For instance, Thomas Jefferson, in a few short sentences, stated the powerful first principles which define the political culture of the United States even unto today. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. In the context of proof of work, Bitcoin's first principles can be stated as follows. Only transactions which are valid according to a given set of consensus rules can be added to the permanent ledger called the blockchain. In order to add transactions to the blockchain, a node must prove to all other nodes that it has performed a required minimum of computation it must provide proof of work. The valid blockchain for any given set of consensus rules is the one representing the most cumulative historical work performed to construct it. The core concept that would become known as proof of work was first made public in 1992 in a paper by Cynthia Dwork and Moni Noor called Pricing via Processing or Combating Junk Mail. 
The idea was expanded, though with the same application mitigating spam, by Adam Back in 1997 with Hashcash. Hal Finney further improved on the idea with his 2004 reusable proof-of-work project. And of course, four years later, Satoshi released the Bitcoin white paper. To give the basic idea of proof-of-work in an overly simplified hypothetical form, Imagine that I have a stack of 100 $1 bills. You have a standard $1 coin. You are going to flip the coin, and every time that it lands on heads, you show it to me. Upon seeing the proof that it landed heads, the proof of your work, I hand you a $1 bill. Let's imagine that you have gotten highly proficient at this process and can do one flip every second. How long will it take you to have acquired my entire stack of $1 bills. Well, I have 100 total bills in my stack. You receive one bill for every time you flip heads. You have a one in two chance of the coin landing heads. That means on average, in 200 flips, 200 seconds, we should expect you to have 100 flips that land heads. In 200 seconds, we should expect you to have received all 100 of my bills. Now let's change the two-sided coin into a six-sided dice. If you receive a bill for every time it lands on one, and you can roll the dice one time per second, then, with your one in six chance of receiving a bill, we should expect it to take you, on average, 600 seconds, 600 rolls, to acquire all 100 bills in my stack. Proof of work takes this easy to understand concept and, through the use of cryptographic hash functions, in Bitcoin this is the SHA-256 algorithm, enables even someone who didn't observe the dice roll to verify the fact that a given roll produced the desired outcome. In the case of Bitcoin, however, our hypothetical dice would have sextillions of sides and quintillions of rolls, hashes, are being made network-wide every second. The dice itself also changes with every new block, and the size of that dice, the difficulty, periodically changes based on how many total hashes per second are being executed network-wide. If a miner hashes a valid number, he gets to add a block to the blockchain, keeping for himself the rewards that go along with finding that block. This is a uniquely egalitarian system, a set of first principles that treats all individuals equally, it doesn't matter how much Bitcoin you own or when you acquired it. Even Satoshi Nakamoto himself is not entitled to any more new coins than a miner who started mining yesterday. Consensus mechanisms like proof of stake privilege those who got there first. Advocates of such mechanisms believe, mistakenly, that the purpose of proof of work is to determine who can add to the ledger. That is a useful application, but the fundamental purpose of proof of work is to provide a first principle with which to build an economic society, to provide a truth which we can hold to be self-evident. One of the most persistent criticisms of proof of work as it is used in Bitcoin is that it requires immense amounts of energy. This criticism has been leveled since literally the first days after Bitcoin's release. The energy expenditure demanded by the proof-of-work consensus mechanism is a feature of Bitcoin, not a bug. To discover the truth for yourself about any topic requires more energy expenditure than simply trusting the word of someone else. The energy expended by the Bitcoin network is energy expended in the literal pursuit of truth. Those who are the first to discover the truth reap great rewards. Bitcoin is a system that incentivizes participants to innovate methods for generating energy more sustainably and to use that energy more efficiently. Those incentives come not from regulatory coercion, but from voluntary participation in a proof-of-work consensus mechanism. We don't know what the final edifice will be, but the rock-solid foundation for a new global economy and culture based on proof-of-work has been laid. What is left for you and I is to build in pursuit of truth.